You may have a program assignment where you have to make a pattern in Java using nested for loops. You may have succeeded and been confused, or you may have no idea how to start. And I'm gonna help you today to make a pattern in Java using for loops. And if you watch all the way through, you'll have a fully working program to help you out. Hey, what's up? It's Alex back again, helping you learn Java. On this channel, I make a Java tutorial for you every week. So if you're new here, then consider subscribing. We'll just kick it off by going into Eclipse going to file new Java project, calling it like nested loops pattern and hitting finish. Next, open it up, right click on the source folder, go into new class and we'll just call it like pattern. Hit this public static void and then hit finish. So we're gonna create a diamond pattern, sort of like this. We have a star and then we have two and then three and then four, and then we go all the way back down to three, two, one, like that. But it'll be based on what a user enters. So if your user enters like the number four, it'll print out one, two, three, four, three, two, one. If they did three, it would be one, two, three, two, one, sort of like that. One piece of code that's really good at repeating like this is a for loop. So we're gonna try to print things out with a for loop and see what happens. So to make a for loop, just type four and then some parentheses. Say int i equals zero. i is less than say three. i plus plus and then some curly braces. Don't worry too much about the setup here. I will explain everything. Don't worry. Don't worry. I got you. I got you. We'll write a print statement to print out say one, one star. And then we'll save it, run it and see what happens looks like we got three stars. And this makes sense. We click the run button, and then that goes into the code in our main method, which is whatever is in these parentheses here, or curly braces. The first thing is a comment. I can actually just delete that. Comments don't do anything. The first piece of code is this keyword four. And we have an integer variable called i that is set to zero. Zero is less than three, so let's run this code. We'll print out one star. That was the last piece of code in the for loop, so we'll go back to the top and we'll increment i by one. So now i is one. One is less than three, so we'll run the code, print out one more star, that's the second one. Go back, i is now two. Two is less than three, so we'll print it one more time. Go back to the top, i is now three. Three is not less than three, so we're gonna break out of it and we're done. That's why you only see three stars. And it looks like this number right here determines how many rows there are. So if I change this to uh, five, save it and run it, then we'll get five stars. The outer for loop takes care of rows, but we can tack on stars by putting a for loop inside of this one. And I'll show you exactly how to do that right now. We'll just make another for loop with the same format. I'm just gonna make a different variable name and we'll call it J. Then we'll say J is less than five again, J plus plus, just like that. Take this print statement, cut, or cut it, and put it inside of there. And let's just see what happens. Let's save it and run it, and we get, we get a whole lot going on. There's a lot of stars. And that's because each time we print a star, we also print a new line. So let's remove that line, and then for every row, we want to print it on a separate line. So just, just like this, we'll save it and see what happens now. It looks like we get five rows and five columns. So this number takes care of the amount of rows and this number takes care of the amount of columns or the amount of stars tacked on. So if I change this to two, we should get five rows and two columns. So save it and run it. Yeah, and we get five rows and two stars. But what if we wanted to do like the pattern says, to do one star, then two, then three, and so on. And it all comes from the amount of stars on the row should be the same number as the row you're on. So the first row has one star, the second row has two stars, the third row has three stars. This for loop takes care of the rows and this for loop takes care of the columns. So if the amount of columns, the amount of stars is equal to the row you're on, then that might work. Let's try that. J is the column and I is the row. So we can say when J is less than the row. 
save it and run it. Let's see what happens. Yeah, and we get this cool thing going on. It's like a little little triangle here. That's the hardest part of this program. I had this assignment back in college, I think freshman year, my Java one class. And this was this was the real kicker here. You had to do uh, in the inner one is less than the variable from the outer one. And that's what makes this so confusing. So I, I hope you help I hope I helped you there. Notice how it's starting at zero. We kind of want it to start at one. So we'll just change the starting row to one and save it, run it, and that should fix that. It also looks like it's going up to four, even though we specified five. That's because it has to be less than or equal to five. Save it and run it, and we're good there. So what's happening here is we're clicking the green run button, and that runs code in here. We see a for loop, and it has this integer i, which is equal to one. One is less than or equal to five, so we're good to run the code inside of it. We see another for loop, and it has j is zero. Zero, is less than one, so we'll run the code in here. We print one star. Next, we go back, we add one to j, so j is now one. One is not less than one, so we break out of it, and we print one line. That's what happens here, and now we're here, at the beginning of the second line. That was the last line in the outer for loop, so we go back to the top. i is incremented, so i is two. Two is less than or equal to five, so we're good to run this code. j is zero. 0 is less than 2, so we print 1 star. j is now 1. 1 is less than 2, so we print another star. j is now 3. 3 is not less than 2, so we don't run this code, and then print a line. So that's why we print 2. And then it continues to go 3, 4, 5. And that's awesome. You're halfway done. You're actually more than halfway done. This is like, this is pretty much all you need. You're just going to kind of duplicate it and change a few things to go back down. And notice how if we change this to like two and save it, then you get one, two. It really just, the number here can be anything. It can be nine, just like that, and you go all the way up to nine here. Or it could be 99. Save it, run it, and then <laughs> you get 99 all the way down looking like an Egyptian pyramid there. I'll change it back to three. I think three is a pretty good number. No, let's do, let's do five. Five's cooler. Run that. Now let's take care of the bottom half. We already got up to five, so let's go back down four, three, two, one. We know that the outside for loop takes care of rows, so we want to do four, three, two, one back down. So ju let's just take care of some rows by making another for loop. I'll just say uh, like less than five again. This is just kind of like what a regular for loop usually looks like. But now we're going down. But it doesn't know yet how many stars to start at. It should start at four, which is the number minus one. So it's like five minus one. So we'll set it equal to four. And we're gonna go down, so change this to minus minus. And then while it's greater than zero. So once it hits one, it'll be over. We know that this piece of code right here takes care of adding stars to the columns. So I'm just gonna copy this whole thing and paste it in there. Let's save it and run it. And now it's done. <laughs> That's so great. Don't worry again, I'm gonna walk step by step again, just like we did before with the second part here. So you know everything that's going on. But first, let's ask a user for a number. Let's um, print out um, like a message. Hello, hello one. Hello, um, how many stars would you like? Just like that, let's be polite. Let's ask how many stars nicely. And then to get input from a user is super easy. We don't need to reinvent the wheel or anything. Java has a great thing called a scanner that'll let us do that really easily. So just type the word scanner with a capital S and then name it. I usually like to call mine scan and say equals new scanner. Put some parentheses and then type system.in. Like that, put a semicolon on that line to end it. Ah, I can't do anything right. Next, hover over scanner and click this import scanner. 
This just means, hey Java, I heard you got a scanner. I would love to use it to get input from a user. Can I please use it? Can I bring it into my program? And that's what import means. It means bring it in so I can use it. So we'll create the number of stars as an integer. Say int num of stars equals whatever the user enters. To get that integer that the user enters, we just type our scan dot next int like that. That gets the integer they enter and then stores it into num. Mm. Whoa, it smells like bacon. Num of stars now has what the user entered. So we can replace five as our like temporary one with num of stars like that. And then this one was the number of stars minus one. So I would just say num of stars minus one. Okay, save it. And then I'll open this up a little bit so that your code can kind of look like this. The source code is in the description that points to my website. You can copy and paste the code from there. <clears throat> I'm just gonna save it and run it. And then let's play with our program. It says, hello, how many stars would you like? Hmm, thank you program for asking. I would like six stars, enter. And now the pattern gets printed out. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then all the way back down to one. This is a pretty cool pattern in Java using for loops. I hope you're enjoying this. I hope um, I'm explaining everything correctly, but I'm gonna go over everything one last time for you. Because I know if I was watching this, I would still be confused and I would like to just recap everything. <coughs> so we click the green run button. We run code in the main method now. The first line of code is to print out a message. Hello, how many stars would you like? We want to get input from a user and we know we can do that using something called a scanner. So we set that up. We create an integer, the number of stars and take the integer that the user enters into there. Next, we have a for loop. We have an integer i that's equal to one. Say that the user entered four into the number of stars. Then we'd have one is less than four. So that checks out, that's good. So we'll enter into here. We have another for loop with uh, integer j equal to zero. j is less than one. So we'll print out one star. Add one to j, so j is now one. One is not less than one, so we're done. And we go out of that inner for loop and print one line. So, so far we print one star and one new line. Next, go back to the top. i is incremented by one. i is now two. Two is less than or equal to four, so that checks out, we're good. j is zero. j is less than two, so we print out one star. Add one to j, j is now one. One is still less than two, so print another star. Go up, j is now two. Two is not less than two, so exit and then print a line. So now we have one star, two star. I is now three, three is less than four, so we print three stars and a line. Now I is four, four is less than or equal to four, so we print four lines or four stars and a line. Now I is five, five is not less than or equal to four, so we don't run this at all. And we go to the next for loop. So that would print one star, two star, three star, four star. Next we see a for loop with an integer i equal to the number of stars minus one. So that's four minus one, so i is three. Three is greater than zero. So that's good, it checks out, we'll go in here. j is zero, j is less than three. So we print one star. j is one, one's less than three, so we print another star. j is now two. Two is still less than three, so we print a third star. J is now four, four is not less than three, so we don't run this code at all. And then we just go to the next line. And we go up, I is now two, since we subtract now, it goes from three to two. Two is greater than zero still. J is zero, zero is less than two, so we print one star. J is now one, one's less than two, print a second star. J is now three, three is not less than two, so we leave and then print a line. And lastly, we just print one more star because i is now one, one's greater than zero, j is zero, zero is less than one, print one star, then go up, one is not less than one, print one more line and we're done. That's the last thing. 
and that's how the program works. So I'll save it, <clears throat> run it, and we'll test our hypothesis here. We'll click the run button and then type the number four and that's how it works. We go one, two, three, four with the top one and then we go three, two, one with the second nested loops. If you think that this would help a friend, please copy and paste the link to this video and send it to them if you think it might help them and I hope this helped you. As always, I appreciate you being here. You could be anywhere in the world, but you're on this video learning Java with me, and I appreciate that so much, and I'm gonna catch you in the next video. See you later.